call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance.
Frank Williams. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the other day at school, I saw you stood up and did this and said, I need you all to help me. What do that mean? Yes, did you want me to hear this? What do that mean? I didn't hear you say yes. yes. At, at the school board, yes. you stood up before the audience. Did you just say yes to them? Turn around and say, I need you all to help me. What were you referring to? I'm asking I you. You'll answer the question no, later. I'm asking you. You said yes to that? For me? Did no. At the school board, they would have had the kids up there last week. OK? That's one thing. The second thing is I'd like to say, when we look at the minutes and things that want to be read, I got some here from 2015, December the 8th, 2015, to January the 26th, 2016. And the online, I would like for the people here to look at them and see, and to see what the trustees and the board did from that time on. But these are the minutes, and you can look at them anywhere you want to. That's the only thing that I have to say right now. But can you please explain that to me tonight? Judy Cast here. I am associated with the plan group and I would like to talk um, about them. For over 10 years, the plan group associated themselves with the village and functions that they had within the uh, community center as well as the fire department. We enjoyed what we were doing. We feel we did it well and we like doing it, and then all of a sudden it has stopped. In the past, I was contacted by whoever was taking care of matters wherever they were, with the fire department, with uh, the community center, and things were arranged ahead of time. The plan group picked up the books at the library which is not an easy thing for these ladies to do with uh, these heavy boxes, but we took them and we labeled them, um, each one of the books that the child was going to get, that they were a donation from the McConaughey Library. And, um, and then we were there to set them up and to hand them out. We did this for um, Christmas, for Easter, for pancake breakfast with Santa as well as the Easter Bunny. Uh, the plan group allowed um, the fire department to use their Easter Bunny costume, so he was there. And all of a sudden, there's nothing at all. I can understand it with the fire department because of things that were going on with them, but I do not understand with the village. First of all, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Nobody knows who's in charge of what. I don't know who to go to to ask, do you want us to continue or don't you? Do you want us to give out books or don't you? Um, it's totally up to whoever's uh, running uh, the situation as to what will happen. But I would like some answers as to what's going on. I know there's a lot going on with the fire department. I can talk to you later. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I also would like to talk about the fact that I came here tonight with expecting to see the forensic audit on the uh, agenda. 
and I don't see it. When I asked someone about it, they said something about needing additional paperwork. I think if that was needed, rather than let the residents feel that it was going to be taken care of tonight, they should have been told it's not going to be taken care of tonight or next week. They have to get additional paperwork. I have read and reread so much stuff, and I, I really and truly feel that some of the Some of them need answers because it's leaving the wrong, uh, the wrong statements out there for the residents. And it's getting near uh, election time, and I think this is why a lot of this stuff is put out there. I read about the fact that, uh, Mr. Mayor, you indicated this is what was said on the social media that you Sims as our uh, administrator. <clears throat> and I feel that whoever wrote that, and he's here tonight, didn't stop and think about the fact that you gave somebody else a different title. You didn't give them the title of administrator because in your campaign you said you didn't need an administrator. You were re uh, retiring from your job and you could handle that. So instead, you got an HR person. Now, I think it's commendable if you save $60,000 a year by not having Mr. Williams, but that doesn't explain about all the money that was spent for the HR lady going at $6,000 a month. Also mentioned ghost payroll. Nobody ever stopped to think about the fact that when Mr. Williams was hired, he came to work in good faith, ready to start his job, and he was stopped from doing it. It had to go to court to get him in here to work. So if he got paid for that time that he was willing to work and had everything he needed, that was not giving him something for nothing. And as far as ghost payrolls go, nobody said a thing about the fact that Joe Wizzawati took a vacation to Florida and got full pay. It's not time. And got full pay for um, going there. Didn't miss a day. But he wasn't uh, entitled to any vacation time any more than they think that Mr. Williams isn't entitled to the time he got. I too have been in contact with the Attorney General's office. If people are going to say one side and not the other, they need to remember that it might be their own fingers are slamming in the door. I also want to mention that not, I asked a question. I didn't ask for anybody's personal uh, matters to be brought in public or anything else. I did ask a question about personnel. You indicated at the end that you will not discuss personnel at an open board meeting. Well, again, I think that's commendable. I think that's commendable, but I have to say that that's not true because it wasn't that long ago and it is a part of a video where you talked about Mr. Williams being incompetent, inability to do the job, and you did this at an open board meeting and I was here and I've seen the video and it's very clear. So I guess it's who do you like and who, do, who don't you like that you can talk about them in public? We're looking for people that are going to be working together. Tonight is another indication that it's not gonna happen here. For two weeks now, they're trying to get the uh, closed session at the end of the board meeting and you indicated we're gonna play that game, huh? Well, 
It's a game on your side, too. They don't have a piece of paper in front of them with the words written down exactly the way they need to be read so that this can happen. What happened last week was not right. That was not, that was very rude. And I think that you need to discuss or show them what you're reading as, to, as far as what they need to say to get that through to you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, um, board members. I'm sorry. My name, yeah, I'm getting to that. My name is Arnold Pullman. Uh, my question, well, it's my understanding that the village has an annual audit. I'd like to know how much does that cost? And I also learned that enclosed in this report is a management letter that, that has the listings that point out what's needed to be addressed or corrected. Over the years, the findings have, these findings have been accumulating to a total of six pages. My question is, is has the current board, board right here, reviewed the six pages of repeat findings available to you in the annual audit? If not, shouldn't the board do their work, their due diligence of reviewing those repeat findings of the annual audit before spending $100,000 per year for a forensic audit. I mean, the audit that this forensic audit will only, firstly, it'll just repeat what the annual audit already has in findings. Okay, and that audit is available to you now. That's my question. My question, Carol Coleman is my name. My question is, where is the fraud or the theft you have claimed is going on? It is my understanding that the village has 800,000 in, in a reserve account, 300,000 allowed it to the department which fund and one million dollars in the water fund again my question to the board is where is the fraud and the theft that the trustees claim is going on Pat Couch, I don't think I've ever heard any one of these trustees say there is theft and fraud going on out of any of their mouths. I, if I've heard it, I didn't hear closely enough to say that this is what our trustees said. There is reason for a forensic audit or we wouldn't be doing one. It should have been done at the beginning of this term for this mayor. It should have been done prior years, but it was never done. We really didn't feel the, maybe the need for it, but right now we need it and we are grateful to every one of the trustees that are going forward with this forensic audit. One thing that they have to look at was why was there a document that the mayor issued and it I don't know if you want to call it fraud or what, when the mayor put out a memo and said shred all these documents, shred financials, bank statements, phone bills, etc., need to be shredded. Disposing of documents properly will alleviate liability on the village should any of this information be disseminated. 
That's from our mayor. If you're gonna dispose of documents, there's a proper way to do that. You should have a book listing, I'm disposing of this, this, or this. Where's that book if, if they were disposed of? I also last week mentioned about the pit bull that's still in my neighborhood, in my backyard, and I'm hoping that I can get the chief to give us an update on what's being done or has been done with that. Also, um, I mentioned a week or two ago about uh, a FOIA that I had put in, that I had asked for documents on a particular residence. I didn't get all the documents because I understand there's some other documents came out after I put in that FOIA. Now, I don't know who missed over those, but when that house was inspected, there was an inspection prior to that resident, but I understand there's still a lot of problems with that home. But whoever let the FOIA not get completely answered, I like to know why, because there were some things that I did not get when I filed that FOIA that came out after the fact. I don't know why. I wonder. Thank you. John Hinkle. Last week I asked for a show of hands, which I I figured they, they never asked for, but I will ask again that end of the meeting, have a show of hands that people would love to be able to see the executive session at the end of the meetings, not at the beginning. I don't know why, I mean, maybe you're afraid to see that people in the village may want it at the end. One other thing come up, uh, water bill. Uh, apparently we did not get a water bill, we checked with the the village here and said it was mailed out from, from last month. Luckily, we paid it because they said the water was going to shut off Monday. And I thought there was a ruling that you got to get a seven day notice that you're being shut down for the water. I think somebody's got to look at what the water department's doing to make sure it's running properly. But I would still love to see at the end of the, the meeting here when you have your comments. I know I can't ask it myself, but. I would sure, and I think the people would like to see a show of hands that who wants the meeting at the end of the session. Thank you. Stephen Shimkus, 50 year resident. My family's been in this town ever since 1960, and I've seen every <coughs> mayor that this town has had come and go. And the question I have for you, Mr. Mayor, is what do you like and what don't you like about being mayor? Good evening, Mayor and Board. Steve LaRock. Mayor and Board, I come for you before you this evening to ask. Residents have heard you say on numerous occasions that you're watching the money you hold the purse strings. So maybe uh, you can explain to me the result of a recent Freedom of Information Act I submitted and I obtained the check register for Village Council. Now I don't know if you're watching the money get spent as fast as it comes in and I don't know if you're just watching it go out the door. Because between May 15th of 2019 and January 15th, 2020, this board expended and approved for payment $119,000 in legal fees with that one village vendor alone. On what I'm sure is necessary legal work. Residents are waiting for their street lights to get fixed. Residents are waiting for their parkways to be restored two, three, five years from being dug up from a water main break. 
Other residents are waiting for their driveway aprons to be replaced. You do so much for the residents, right? <laughs> right. You found money, you found $120,000 to spend on legal fees. You better start finding the money for the residents. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Madonna Brown. Could you provide some clarity for me? I want to know whose <coughs> responsibility is it to make sure money is available to pay bonds and bonds. And I also want to know um, some clarity on um, the money that's being removed from the water fund. Looking back on the accounts since about 2014, what is the purpose of the money being removed from the water fund and what it's used for? And I also want um, a little bit of clarity on the parks and rec situation. Um, I dropped some children off over there and girls had to come back. You have anything over there for the girls to do? The girls cannot participate in anything. And I also think it's absurd that as a taxpayer, that I will have to send the other children back in with a dollar for open gym. I can understand being paid for different programs and things for them to do, but for open gym, I think that's unacceptable. Thank you. touching my arm, I have no idea, could have been whatever, I don't know, that the last event, the last event I went to was yesterday. They're talking about that, I was talking to people, period, so I don't know, then the event I went to before that was Black History Event. So I've been to a couple of events in the last few days, dealing with the school district, and um, why was I touching my arm, I have no idea, but could have been, it could have been a lot of different things. I have no idea. So I to take you, give you an answer to that one. I do not know. As far as the um, the books being donated, and now it has been stopped. Um, if we have an event, I'm sure, like always, for the last two and a half years I've been here, if they have an event, I'm sure the town group, the library, whoever um, knows about it, they find out about it, they send a representative or the PAM group to come out to the event that we have and distribute the books. Um, right now, uh, we haven't had one in a while, and I'm sure the next one we have, I think it'll be Easter, and the Easter egg hunt, and I'm sure that at that time, that person, uh, we'll, we'll, we will be getting in contact with whoever it is that helps donate the books or help distribute the books <coughs> at the Easter egg hunt. The uh, forensic audit, I'm sure it has been talked about and it's going to continue to be talked about. And I have some reservations about it, but that's not what this is about. So um, how it didn't make it on the agenda, I have no idea. I read that it, was, it needed some more paperwork to be taken care of. So that's speculating. That I would think that would be the reason why it didn't go on the agenda, because it needed some more paperwork to be taken care of before it's put on there. Uh, all this all is run between fifty and sixty thousand, depending on what they have to do, um, how the auditors have to prepare, gather information, 
Because if they come here and the information is not readily available, they have to do anything, they charge for that too. So it can start anywhere between 50,000 and go on to 60 to 70,000 for one audit. Um, so this was, it was already said how much it would cost for a forensic audit. Yes, that's $100,000 per year. Um, and that's if they don't have any cost overruns. So the average price is $100,000 uh, per year uh, to do a forensic audit. So however many years you want to do, that's how much you'll do. <coughs> My whole catch on that, I'm not going to even go into that right now, but that's, that, that, that's the question that was asked, and that's what it was, uh, that's what it would cost. As far as the uh, shredded documents, I don't know the letter. I did have a letter way back. You usually don't take questions, but. Well, there was one other question that I had, and it involved. Go ahead, sir. Could you ask the question you asked? I thought I asked about the, about the current board has reviewed the fine. Have they reviewed the fine? Oh, 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 yes. Okay, okay. yes. Okay, I see that. I'm sorry. It just say read. Hey, okay. Dan, did they read the annual? I'm sorry. That's that's my small. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the board read the the audit. I'm not sure. I can't answer for the board, but the audit is readily available uh, online, and uh, I think in the. Um, I would think it would be in the finance finance office too. But the audit the audit the audit findings are online and then also the uh, management letter is also online too. Um, so yeah, that's if the if the board read it, I'm not I cannot answer that for 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 you because I really don't know, but it is readily available. So who can we find we, out? We, 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 okay. Because okay. I, I don't know what, you're asking me questions, hypothetical questions that I cannot answer for someone else. I mean, if they read it, they did. If they didn't, then they didn't. But I cannot answer for someone what someone else did. Okay. I mean, the only thing I can tell you that it was that it was um, it is available. That's what I can tell you. Um, okay, shredding. Okay, shredding the documents. Um, like I stated before, I don't. I may have told people to. Could be a lot of different things that we could have shredded documents for, but. I did send a letter out, and, and if we feel that I sent a letter out to, to shred documents to try to hide something, then okay. Then, then um, you can, you know, I can assure right now on the, on the um, as a record, I've never shredded documents. I've never did anything in the village to hide anything. I don't need to do that, because I'm going to stay above board. I got another person I have to answer to, and this person is not on this earth. So I'm not going to sit here and try to to sugarcoat anything. Like I have no reason to sit here and, and hide anything or do anything underhanded. That's not what I got involved for. Politics, yes, is a dirty game. Yes, it is. But believe me, I, that's not what I got involved for. I got involved to move this village forward and to put it on the track for success. Um, as far as your foyer, Paperwork uh, that you didn't get all of the four-year um, uh, requests. Uh, that's something that you would have to. I, don't, I wouldn't say make another, uh, bring another four-year. I would say uh, come up and talk to powers to be to find out what is it that you did not get, what information that you're still looking for, and if you address it to myself, I'll make sure that, that it gets answered. Because if you ask for a four-year, you didn't get all of the things that you asked for. I would not have known that because I did not go and look at the FOIA request. So I would have no idea of knowing if you did or did not get all the information that you're looking for when you put a FOIA request in because I don't even look at the FOIA. Um, I guess there's been, they, they, we raised our hand, I'm sorry, the board has raised their hands and the board has, has expressed that they would like to have the executive session at the end. However, sometimes, if it's a short one, and if we need to do a presentation or talk to someone that's going to be here, why would I keep that person here doing the whole meeting and then talk at the, at the end? But again, if the board does not, as we just saw today, not want to have the executive session at the beginning, okay, well not. I'll just ask for it. If they don't want to do it, fine. 
Uh, but I do resent the fact that someone is saying, I read, or I read how to properly do it. And I had to learn. I had to learn like any other trustee needs to learn. I had to learn how to make a motion to suspend the rules, to change the agenda. Okay, well, I, I know that, but I, I didn't get a template. I had to learn that. And, I, and, I, and, I, and uh, in the years that I was trustee, I, I made mistakes in that same aspect. I said it wrong for a while until I had to learn it the right way. Um, what do I like and what do I not like about being mayor? Well, about my heart, I enjoy being mayor. I, I, I enjoy making people smile, making people um, want to come and live in the town that, we're, that, I'm, that I'm mayor at. That's what I enjoy. What do I not enjoy? Stupidity. That's what I don't enjoy when someone tries to do something out of a hateful reason, and I can see that. But I don't talk about it, but I do enjoy the job. I do enjoy being mayor, and that's why I became mayor. This is my third time trying to do it, and I did, and it happened to finally the third time. I didn't give up after the first two. Um, The numbers speak for themselves as far as uh, legal fees. I never looked at that number, but if you said $119,000 that we spent from May of 2019 to January 2020, then that's what it is. I, I, don't, I, I can't dispute that. Um, but yes, we do need to look at other things. Sidewalks, trees, fire hydrant, roads. All these things should be should be looked at. That's why you're here. That's why you come to the board meetings or come and talk to someone. And that's why and you live here. You don't want to live coming out potholes, trees about to fall, lights aren't on, sidewalks need to be fixed. Those are the things we should try to concentrate our money on. Something that's going to give a return in the village that you live in that you pay taxes in. Um, and last. Pay bonds, okay. Um, bond, most of bonds, well, bonds, period, you float a bond for certain different, certain reasons. You can float a bond as a floater for this building. It was under the pretense that they were going to float the bond. I mean, they floated the bond, they thought they would get money from businesses coming in, building, and at first, at the first two years, I think it worked. We did get, it's called impact fee. That's when you actually build or you, you, you put something that you, you dig in the ground and you pay an impact fee. That money would go, went to, at the beginning of this building, went to pay, pay the bonds for this building, but it dried up. So what the bondholders have the right to do is levy the town, and they did. So for the rest of the years, that bond was paid through by the taxes of, of the taxpayers. And that's any, as any bond, unless it's a protected bond, and those are the ones in your TIF area. When you have a bond in your TIF area, well, your TIF, your TIF funds pay for that. So therefore, it's not a um, <coughs> hindrance on, on, the, um, on the village resident. Because the TIFs actually pay for it. But that money for that bond has to stay in the TIF to enhance the TIF. You can't take that bond money that you have a bond in the TIF and come out and fix streets on it. That are not in the tip. And that's where that came from. And um, the other bonds that are not, we have to abate those bonds, we have to pay them. That's what we have to um, levy for each and every year. The bonds that are not in the tip are paid for by the residents, by the taxpayers. So there are some bonds that are not protected by the tip that were years and years ago, but they're still, they're still paid for by the residents until they're abated completely and then they're no longer. Like this bond here for this building. This was paid off two years, well last year, 2018. So um, now it's not being levied anymore, so that's money that, that the taxpayers are saving. Okay. That being said, Go right into uh, reports and officers. My report. 
Okay, um, and several things. And um, first, before I get into reading, I have a gentleman here that uh, came to me. He came from a program that they had, that we that they uh, that he was uh, working on in uh, Fort Heights. Um, he was doing their baseball and some of the projects that they were doing in Fort Heights. And uh, I talked, I met him at a several meetings, and I asked him to come out and and and, and volunteer and and um, help us get some things started here in the village um, for the youth here um, for uh, some structural some structural projects, not just sit there and babysit, but have something for them to do, have a plan, have a program presented, and uh, have something that, that the, uh, the youth in our village and also our young adults um, come in, um, can come up and on, on different days, it's not every day is not a day that you can come in, it's gonna be different days, uh, but I wanted him to explain some of these things, but I do want to introduce him, he's volunteering right now, when we get the program started, I'll bring the programs for the board. Uh, there is money for programs in the uh, budget. So I'll bring those before the board when we, when we start doing that. But right now, he's getting everything together. He's, a, he's, a, he's getting his personnel and people who are also volunteering um, for right now until we can find out. And I'm looking at maybe a month. We can see things going for a month, then I will come back to the board and we can go to the next step. But right now, he's getting everything started. And we're getting to have, we got some work to be done in the gym. We got to have some maintenance work done in the gym. And uh, right now he's trying to work through that, but there is going to be some maintenance work uh, that needs to be done. I was a few weeks ago, we're going to change the entrance and other things that we need to take care of in the um, gym itself. So uh, I just wanted everyone to meet uh, Mr. Uh, George uh, Green. And Mr. Green, if you want to come up and just microphone. So I'm gonna give my mic and just kind of introduce yourself and kind of let the board know. Uh, introduce yourself to the board and to the residents. And there's anything else you need to say, I would appreciate that. Uh, good afternoon, uh, evening, Mayor and uh, board and residents of uh, Salt Village. My name is George Green. I've been working with the youth for over about 40 years. I uh, currently run a baseball program, and uh, I've been trying to expand the program into Salt Village. I met the mayor uh, maybe three or four months ago, and we talked about doing some things in this village, uh, trying to uh, stop the uh, problems that they are having at the high school level. Um, and. We talked about some ways that we can do that. Uh, I needed some place to start working with our kids uh, in the winter time for, for the baseball, for practicing and stuff. Our baseball program had 52 kids last year uh, from all over, from villages all over, uh, University Park, Park Forest, Ford Heights but we played mainly in Ford Hikes. Um, I helped get a, uh, the baseball field built in Ford Hikes. Uh, it cost $250,000 from baseball tomorrow. And that's what we've been playing. We're looking, I'm looking to grow the program, expand it into uh, other villages. And my goal is to try to stop the uh, problems that they're having at Bloom Trail <clears throat> with the youth. Uh, I think that our problem is that our youth just don't know each other from village to village. And uh, the mayor has given me the opportunity to uh, run some programs over the gym. I am the person that has had the gym open for the last uh, week. We haven't had any problems. I have some uh, sheets where the guys come and fill in, uh, sign in. I run the clock for about 15 minutes. Uh, I don't let them pick teams. As they come to the door, they sign in. The first 
10 players that play against each other and we go down the list from there. Uh, I don't allow spectators inside the gym. If you're not playing basketball uh, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, if you're not playing basketball, then I'm going to ask you to leave because I don't want anybody's stuff to walk out of that gym. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep an eye on everybody, especially if you're just sitting around uh, watching. So we haven't had a problem. Last night we had about 25 high school kids in there uh, playing basketball. And they, they all had fun and they, they kind of walked around. Uh, and uh, they all came to me at the end of the day and thanks for uh, the structure that they're finally having. They don't have chaos in there like they had before where everybody's just running around doing nothing. On Tuesday and Thursday, we practice baseball. If you probably noticed tonight, they have, uh, we have baseball practice over there. The kids that we take from baseball are from the ages of four to 14. We play in a South Suburban Youth Baseball League. That uh, league cons uh, consists of uh, University Park, Richland Park, Park Forest, Cal City, Markham, uh, uh, Hazelcrest, Ford Hikes, Chicago Hikes, and I think that might be it. So we play against, we know those guys play about uh, from the T-ball up to the, uh, the from T-ball up to the uh, Pony League, the Pony of 13 to 14. We don't have a Pony League uh, baseball field. So that's what I was kind of looking for, a baseball, a Pony League baseball field. Uh, Bloom Trail has offered to let us use their field. The county has, uh, Cook County, Tom Dart has offered to to help us out as much as they could uh, to get a field if we have a place, we find a place to play. The only thing about playing at Bloom, practicing up and playing at Bloom Trail is that their bases are just a little bit longer than the home league. Their bases are 80, are 90 feet and we play 80. Uh, my goal is to, you know, turn, turn these kids around, point them in the right direction get them in the secondary education through athletics uh, and, and you know just stop all the problems that we have in, in uh, our communities uh, anybody have any questions no uh, I'm sure they're going to be hopefully you said Monday through Friday Mon Monday through Friday yes sir Monday okay. through Friday also uh, I have enrolled in a class uh, May the 29th through the 31st in Bloomington, Illinois. Uh, I'm going to become a special Olympics coach and what I want to do is uh, try to implement them into and get them involved in doing stuff in the, uh, the, uh, the village also. Being that you guys have a facility here, uh, that would be something that uh, that is really needed. I know I have a special needs son, uh, and uh, my sister has a special needs son, and to just watch them sitting around not being included into stuff, you know, it's kind of heart wrenching. Uh, when he went to when he went to Creek Moni High School, he did Special Olympics, so I'm, I'm trying to see if I can bring that stuff out to the south suburbs, out this way, too. And I, I, I just have one last thing. Uh, you showed me something about a culinary class and you're trying to get you on the start. Yes. Uh, my sister, I, and I could pass out these flyers. Not, well, it's not the flyers, it's the qualifications and what she has planned to do. She is a, uh, she taught college some culinary classes in college and she wants to bring this she wants to you know implement it here this is uh, some ideas that she has she just put some put some down on paper and 
she asked me to get, you know, to take a look. It's a lot of things that can be done over there in that facility. It's a lot of things that, uh, that people need. There are a lot of needs in the south suburban area that, we, you know, if you don't have a car in the south suburban area to drive everywhere, you know, you have a problem. And, and you know, we can make this stuff ready, readily available in these areas. Um, so this, this will be a culinary class that she's thinking about that she would like to do. And then uh, if, if the board likes it and approves it, she'll bring the rest of her qualifications in, you know, at, at, at a later date. But these are just some things, some ideas that I have that can be run out of that facility. As you see, I work for Bear Paint. Uh, I drive a truck every day. And I just make time because to do nothing is not an option. We see what doing nothing has gotten us. So uh, it's time for us to step up and start helping our youth and uh, getting them ready for life. Right. Are you opening it up for questions? Did you have a question? Yes. Sure. Good evening, Mr. Green. Thank you for coming tonight. A uh, couple of questions that I have is the resident earlier stated that girls are not allowed into the gym. Is that true? And if so, why is that true? No, ma'am, that's not true. Okay, can you explain? I had about four young ladies come to the gym the other night. I explained to them that if you're playing basketball, sign in. Two of the young ladies signed a name and then said that they don't have their gym shoes with them and they scratched their name out. I told them that I don't allow spectators in there. One is a, a couple of other late young ladies came with their boyfriends and I, I explained to them that the way we keep problems down is that you're on the basketball playing, you're on the floor playing basketball and somebody's sitting next to your lady friend talking to her, I don't want them to think that you are addressing her in a, in, a, in, a, in a wrong manner. So to keep those problems from occurring, we don't need spectators just sitting around the gym and causing those type of, having that type of problem. So I ask them just for the spectators not to come in the gym. If they're coming to play basketball, they're welcome to play basketball. I don't have a problem with that. If they're, if they're young enough and they want to come play baseball, I don't have a problem with them coming to the gym to play baseball. It's just that we're not going to have a bunch of people just sitting around and stuff start walking out the gym. Second question, um, the dollar that you collect at the door, is that also true and where does the dollar go? I don't collect a dime at the door. I haven't taken a dime from any kid. What I did was I went and bought water out of my pocket. I bought water and chips out of my pocket and I charge them for the water and the, and the chips, and all I do is just replenish it. And, and what I, and what I, I'm sorry, and what I told the mayor that what I would do is at the end of the basketball season, when we go full into baseball, I would buy a bunch of hamburgers and hot dogs and pop and just give it to them. So mind you, Mr. Green, we're just responding to things that we're saying. I'm saved. sorry. So don't take it personally. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, just know that we're, we're asking questions based upon what we've been told. And as far as the culinary, culinary class is concerned, is that a class that um, anybody who decides to take it would pay directly to your sister, or will this be a class that the village is going to offer and she may do it on a voluntary basis? It's voluntary. All the stuff that I'm talking about, which you're volunteering. Okay, because yes. knowledge is power, so that's why I asked these yes. questions. Thank yes, you very much for your answers. Yes, ma'am. Since we just met you, yes, ma'am, and I'm, I'm quite sure you haven't had a chance to develop any kind of um, policy and procedures for the parks and recs. Am, am I right? Are you going? Is that something you're going to work on? Oh yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, just for the, uh, public knowledge, I was the uh, park district president for Ford Heights. So uh, if, yes, I will. Uh, I, I will uh, uh, work on that if that's what that's what's needed. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. All right. Uh, Thank you. Is there, is there, is, if I'm not needed, Mayor, I've, yeah. I've got some kids over there. Okay. Uh, and I've, I've got some adults over there, but I need to go lock up. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, also, I have on the um, on my report, um, yesterday I attended, along with a couple of other trustees, um, at the Wagner School, that's the um, pre-K through second, pre-K, pre which is, and I, didn't, I found that, I knew that, but I didn't know that they were talking about uh, from birth to um, sec from birth to uh, two years old that they actually, I'm sorry, three years old, they actually have a type of daycare where the parents are actually there. So that's, that's something that's, that's great. But anyway, I was there for a celebration. And the celebration was a nationwide um, it's called the Teach for Ki Teach Kindness Challenge, and this is done nationwide, not just Illinois, but throughout the United States. And Wagner School, which is part of Consolidated School District 168, won first place, and uh, that was a big deal. That's that's a big deal because first of all, it's not in the state, not in the city, it's in the United States, and they got it. In, they got a trophy. They got a proclamation by LG Sims, which is represented from the state, and then they also got a, uh, an award of five thousand dollars to go towards what they needed. But that is something that um, I just wanted to say, and I just wanted to bring it up. That's something that's a big deal. Uh, it was on the news too, but it, I, you know, for that for for Salt Village to get recognized for something like that for the United States, I thought was very, very, very huge. Um, Out there, two of the well, it's really three um, school board members that are here: uh, Radonna Brown, <laughs> Mr. Barrett, <laughs> and also our uh, own clerk, Madam They, they all had shirts. Everybody there had these uh, with shirts. And also, we was accompanied by our own fire, our police chief, uh, Malcolm White. He was also there. So I just wanted to say that was, that was something that was very, very enlightening um, to know that we got recognized for something like I didn't even know that existed, but it, it's really, really, really something to, um, to be proud of in the community and for the schools. Um, there were some questions asked last week about certain things, and I just wanted to get back. Um, and so, it won't, you know, you guys think that I, I just write questions down and don't do anything about it. But um, there was a question about the front door um, not being handicap accessible. Um, we're going to try to see if we can, I think we have to go into the program to try to work that out to find out if we can, can do it because the way things are, if that, if that opens that way, then if some other things may not operate. So we're going to have to try to look at that uh, right now to see if we can make that handicap compliant. So if that's not been going dead ears, we are talking, we are looking into it, and we're going to uh, see if we can make it handicap uh, accessible for um, those that need it to be handicap accessible. Um, the community development is uh, looking at, and I'm asking for uh, quotes for dead trees, um, the removal of these dead trees in the village, it's over 400 of them. And I talked to Public Works about it, and we're going to try to get some, some quotes and some bids to knock down some of the, I don't know if we have enough money to knock them all down, but if they're dead, they need to come down. And we just cannot do it all ourselves, so we're going to have to go out for quotes for that. And I'm also looking for quotes for the streets. MFT can only do so much, and a lot of times they don't do it enough, so we're going to have to do it little by little. We're just going to have to insert that and, uh, and, and make that part of that. And then some of the sidewalks, too, especially the very, very bad ones. So now that we have something that we can start some of these programs with, 
I'm looking and I'm going to be asking the department and there's really only well maybe two that we can go to and put our hands together to find out how much it will cost so we can get some of these things done uh, and also lights uh, I know the light issue has been addressed but if there still may be some lights that need to be replaced and I think most of it is wiring but that still has to be done um, I'm going to, uh, uh, we're, we're still looking at a store. I talked to the village administrator. Uh, he's going to probably, in his report, I'm not sure, give an update. But we are looking to try to bring a grocery store here. Before anything, that's my next, that's the number one priority that I have right now is to try to bring a grocery store into Salt Village. Um, and we just, we're right now we're on the asking stage. We're trying to, everyone wants to bring in a um, cannabis. Uh, like growing or store, or whatever. I'm looking for a store. Cannabis is okay. People are gonna buy it, but right now, I need. I want a store, and that's the number one priority. And not just a small come out of store. That's substantial enough that you want to go shop in. Store that I want to go shop in. So not just a store, just something a, a grocery or supermarket, basically, that that we can uh, have in the village, and. Um, we have several places we can put it, but right now we have to, and we're going to beat the bushes to do what we have, need to do to make that happen. And um, we're looking also for an, an employee appreciation lunch uh, in March, so we're looking to do that. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a few things that I would like to update you and the Board of Trustees on. The first one, I would like everyone to mark their calendars and let me know if April the 28th is satisfactory for the Student Government Day here at the municipality. We're looking at April the 28th. You don't have to let me know right this minute, but I need to know if we need to change the day, okay, so that I can communicate with the school district. I would like to give you an update on the census and what the complete count uh, committee has been doing. Oh, back in December, we found out about a grant which was in phase two of operation that was being provided through Cook County. And so during Christmas break, some of the staff from a couple of the schools and one person from one church, we all got together and we looked at what we would want to include in a grant. Four entities developed grants for Salt Village. To my knowledge, not one of us received any of those funds. I'm not certain about the library. They were one entity as well that submitted. So I see we're shaking our head. So that means in spite of Salt Village being declared one of the severely underreported villages, our powers to be did not find suit or fit to allot any monies to the village of Salt Village as we were attempting to do our outreach program to increase the number of individuals who would respond to the survey. But just because they did not give us money does not mean that we're going to not do anything because we know how important it is that each and every one of our residents are counted in this census because it would negatively impact us for the next 10 years and we don't need that. So we're continuing on. We can't do all that we had anticipated. We had looked at our outreach from five, six, seven different angles. We were going to do videos, we were doing um, mail blast, we were going to communicate with Comcast to see, you know, if we could be on um, video along that line. We were just going to do a whole lot of things. 
One thing, though, that we thought that we would do, and we were going to do it at each one of our sites, and the majority are still going to do that, and that is it's imperative that we provide assistance to some of our residents as they file online, because with the census now, they don't just go door to door. They start with uh, people being able to use their smartphones, or they can use their computers to answer the few questions. However, we know, especially with some of our seniors and some of our residents with special needs, they would need some assistance. So I know that the library is planning to dedicate a, at least one computer to provide assistance. Um, Bloom High School, not Bloom Trail, but Bloom High School will allocate a couple in their lab to assist people who are in need. And we will have one computer in our lobby that will assist people as well. So that piece is so very important. So that's going to be the biggest push right now. And that is so that people will know that there is assistance with them completing that census. But the meetings and everything that we were just all gung-ho for, it's not as much planning as we had anticipated, so we won't have as many meetings as we were having. But nonetheless, we're going to get the job done. I need the trustees to know, and anyone else, that if you're planning an activity, though, and you need some materials that focus on the census, if you can shoot me an email or just tell me uh, if you need materials, let me know the date of your event and an estimate of the number of people that you're anticipating so that I can make certain that I can get some materials to you. And know that to get them, that means beg borrowing. I'm not going to steal, but I will be begging and borrowing. I want to talk to you now about the candidates forum that's scheduled for tomorrow night. And I'm certain if you're on Facebook and wherever, you know that I have been blowing it up. I've been begging and pleading with people to please come out. I think that it's very important that our elected officials who's counting on you and your vote for them to get into office, for them to know that we have expect expectations as well. If they want our vote, they need to hear us and let us know what they're going to do for us. Right now, I have 25 people who have confirmed that they will be here tomorrow. I promise you, I do not want all 25 of those people to come here and see 10 people, even though we know that every vote counts. But we want to make a remarkable difference in terms of their perception of the village of South Village. So therefore, I need you to come out, listen to their two-minute spiel, and then communicate with them. It's going to be a very informal. As they come in, we will announce them. They will get up. They will talk to you. They'll walk around, pass you information. You can ask them whatever questions. I am planning to have, at least where the judges are concerned, a list of all the judges so that then you can mark on that piece of paper which ones were remarkable for you. Which ones do you think that is worthy of your vote, that you will use that knowledge as you go to vote on March 17th or doing early voting, which starts March 2nd? Please come out tomorrow. Let's talk about the FO, the FOIA and OMA training. I mentioned it a couple weeks ago, and sometimes, you know, I should probably just be a little quiet, because as a result of me mentioning and reminding you that you needed to do the OMA training, we have a FOIA request. I'm trying to figure out which ones of you have done your OMA training, which ones of you have not. So, I have one trustee to do it today. I'm going to ask if you know that you have not done it, please do it tomorrow. 
Well, maybe Thursday. Get it in, okay? Thank you. Um, where minutes and accounts payable are concerned, uh, the trustees asked and they prevailed that accounts payable materials will be in the back for you for your review during minutes, I mean during meetings. I've attached the minutes and the accounts payable together. Tonight, I printed out 50 copies. So that was a total of about hmm, eight to 10 pages per person. And quite a few of them are gonna go where? In the garbage. So I'm going to, I'm, we're playing around with how many copies to make. If I run out of copies, because I am for the next meeting, I will be decreasing the number of copies that I make from the 50 maybe down to 30. But if we run out, just be understanding, you will still, you can still get one. It's just we're trying to figure out how many and what to do so that there's not a lot of waste. So don't scream and holler at me if we run out, okay? Um, another thing, it is customary and it is in our, it is a required uh, function that we have at any open meeting. We have in there that each person is able to speak three minutes. And what's customary in a lot of places, and it's in the code too, Usually, if you want to take part in public comment, when you walk in the door, you would sign your name and say, I'm ready to do public comment. I want to do public comment. Please don't shut down on me. And I'm wondering if that's something, trustees, that we may have to consider because more and more frequently now, we have people to say, oh, she can have my minutes, she can have mine. I don't know who yours is. You know, and so like tonight I had to say, who said that? So it would be just a way of keeping up with who wants to make public comment, who's declined, so we can just do a little better planning. But that's the first time that I'm mentioning this, and it's just something that I would like for the trustees to take into consideration. Mr. Mayor, that completes my report. Okay, thank you. Um, village Administrator, uh, Mr. Chris Williams. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you very much. I have a report, and please, Madam Clerk, don't take me to the woodshed because I didn't email this to you earlier. Um, you will, didn't you like mine? <laughs> but with that said, um, just for a quick moment, um, I'm deviating slightly from uh, my report, and I'm just going to echo some things that the mayor had said. Um, the irony is that you know there's a slight misnomer out here on some levels, but one of the things is a lot of the things that we are working behind the scene collectively. Um, sometimes we have competing views of how things should be done, but nevertheless, there are some um, things that we are working collectively to make happen. And to the mayor's point, when um, he was staring down some businesses that want to come in here and do uh, some cannabis, well, actually, they wanted to hemp. But we were very clear about the messages, like, OK, that's great, but you want our resources, this is what we want. And we've been unwavering on that um, you know, position about uh, securing um, a grocery store here, as well as I know there's some other uh, corporate authorities that are working diligently on that as well. So um, just to be very clear, uh, there are a lot of collaborations that are going on. With that said, um, one of the things I've been um, working on as well is working with our CMAP department on um, our street policy and also some grant applications that uh, we're going to be applying for as it relates to our street improvement. In addition, um, working with some of our um, contractors that we already entered into agreements with prior to my arrival about um, revenue enhancement with our utility auditing and also the collection of fines. In addition to that, I've begun um, assessing some urine operations at, based on some available data points around that, and we'll be ongoing with that. Um, additionally, I've had the wonderful pleasure of collaborating with our Director of Community Development to implement strategies and opportunity to invest in um, our housing stock and beautification. Um, it's clearly critically important for our uh, region. 
In addition, embark with our IT department in the process of identifying solutions to upgrade some of our existing operations, which we, you, you all saw me last week presenting. Um, and then lastly, which is just is obviously a partial list, but um, begin an early discussion with our departments around our budgeting and supporting the CAFR process that um, I know our finance director will talk about and was alluded to earlier. Uh, we are in the process and moving forward on that. With that said, I think that's gonna complete my report for today. Thank you. Um, village engineer, Mr. Jim Zardes. Thank you, Mayor. Last week, Robinson Engineering met with the mayor, village staff, and staff from the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, or IDNR. The IDNR is questioning whether fill was added in a floodplain within the Lincoln Meadows subdivision. Robinson investigated the issue and determined that the floodplain was incorrectly mapped by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, and is requesting FEMA to correct the mapping. Village and Robinson staff are conducting an additional file research to further document that the subdivision construction did not impact the floodplain limits. That concludes my report, and Mayor. Mr. Mayor, yes. I have a question, Mr. Zarnick. Uh, Mr. Zarnick, uh, I think like a month ago, a month or so ago, uh, we had the board pass the ordinance saying that uh, we would uh, approve some expenditures out of the MFT for public works to do some seasonal work for the rest of the year. And I think last week or two weeks ago, it was mentioned that we found uh, some money to fix street lights. Uh, is that true? Are we fixing street lights this year with MFT money? It depends on what we would be doing with the street lights, but it depends whether we've got enough funds for it. It depends whether we had that initially in our plan that we submitted to uh, IDOT, got approved by IDOT uh, last year, about this time. So if we didn't get it approved, we're probably not gonna do it. Um, that's correct, I'd have to go back and see um, what we had in terms of maintenance items that we had approved by IDOT, um, but uh, I'm not sure whether we had that as a line item or not. Okay, that's all I had. All right, um, Middle Attorney is ready to make a graph. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just real quick, uh, per the board's uh, direction, uh, my office we created the ordinance. Uh, following up on the Attorney General's opinion uh, as far as the minutes procedure, and that was forwarded to everyone, and I believe that will be up on the next uh, Community of the Whole meeting for discussion. And we also uh, prepared the resolution for the forensic audit, uh, which was uh, prepared today and sent out to uh, uh, Mayor, the Village uh, Administrator, and all of the, uh, the trustees, and that too should be up at the next uh, Community of the Whole. Thank you. Treasury report, Mr. Anthony Finch. Thank you, Mayor Board, Madam Clerk. Um, at this time, I did not have a Treasury report, but um, I did want to address some of the comments that was as mentioned earlier. Uh, with respect to the forensic audit, I did speak on it last Tuesday, and if I misspoke and said that it would be on this agenda tonight, I apologize for that. However, there is a power process and I've said this before and I'll say it again, Salt Village is unique to the experience that I'm used to when it comes to government processes and procedure. So if I misspoke, I apologize for that. I was not intended to have it on this agenda today. However, I have put it out there to be on the agenda to be voted on next uh, Tuesday. One of the things I was asked about was the uh, respect to the findings. Yes, I did speak about the findings. I do not know, as the mayor alluded to, whether or not the board um, or anyone else other than myself has uh, read the findings, but I will tell you because of the um, challenges that I have been dealt with since I've been here, probably most of them have not been addressed. Um, it was mentioned about the water bill not being received. That was something that I brought to everyone's attention prior to two weeks before the water bill was to go out. 
As you guys know, because this board tend to bring a lot of things to light at council meeting, we was understaffed. Um, but that did not excuse why the bill, water bills did not go out. The person that was responsible for that, I personally know, spent roughly eight hours to get the water bills out in time. With, with regards to the water bill, hopefully within another month or so, um, it should be in March, but it's, unfortunately it's not coming out in March, we will have the new water bills going out. Um, I found out about a week ago we still having some issues with the water meter readings that I assume to my fault that was um, previously addressed, but I found out that they was not addressed. So once those uh, items are addressed, we will be having the new water bill go out. Hopefully I will have that uh, the first round in April. With that being said, you will get water bills. There are probably gonna be issues. So if you could please, and I'm saying this respectfully, keep it off of social media and keep it from being an issue. I understand we have to fix these items because it's gonna be a, an adjustment. But once we get it adjusted, it would make your life so much easier because you would get a regular size envelope like the majority of your bills now. But it's going to be a process. Um, another thing was asked about the bonds, who's responsible for the bonds payment. As the interim finance director, and in most municipalities, the finance director is responsible for, for bond payments as well as any other bills that has to be paid throughout the year. So to answer that question, I'm responsible for bond payments. And I think at this time, I, I'm pretty certain I haven't missed any. Um, with respect to money being transferred from the water fund, I know that was a contentious issue um, when I first got here. All I can say prior to 2018, I cannot address that or know what happened and why it happened. But I can, I can assure you, and if you choose to verify, I can verify. Water fund has not been illegally transferred. Water fund that has been transferred is for transfer of items related to the water fund. Every two weeks that I make a water fund transfer is related to a water bill vendor payment. Um, the other thing that was mentioned, the accounts payable list, yes, it's back on the table. I will say this, and I personally do not think it should be back on the table because it's a draft and because of the, what goes on is in this body, I don't want to become a back and forth issue about what items on the accounts payable list. With that being said, it wasn't my decision to make that decision to put it back out there, but it is out there. But again, if you have questions, please understand that we have a process in place now with respect to how bills are being uh, approved, reviewed, and then approved at the council meeting. Um, and I think that's about the other, other issue. Um, there is a lunch and learn. Um, as of today, I decided I wanted to do a lunch and learn with the staff. Um, all village employees are welcome. I don't know if it's going to be uh, a personal development lunch and learn or a leadership lunch and learn. Um, it's not going to cost the village any money because I'm going to take care of the cost myself. It's something that I just want to bring to the board, I mean not to the board, to the staff um, as far as an appreciation for those that have helped me to try to do the best we can um, over the last few months that I've been in Salt Village. With that, the mayor and board, that concludes my report. Thank you. Um, finance and administration. Mayor Board, Madam Clerk, in front of you you have the disbursement, accounts payable and payroll as of February 25th. Payroll as of February 14th was $127,243.85. Um, last week we um, approved, I asked the board to approve a per diem for chief to go to a training class. Um, that was approved, so you see that there's a payment to the chief for $500 for a per diem expense while he's at his training class. For tomorrow, I'm asking you to approve $174,854.12. For the total disbursement of $302,597.97. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, five Well, is it, is it Chief? Chief. Assistant Chief. Assistant Chief. Okay, Assistant Chief did it settle Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The fire department responded to 33 calls for service for the period from February 6th through February 20th. We did not have any major incidents. Uh, we are welcoming back Gary Bell to our roster. This brings our total current roster up to 21 members. 
Um, in regards to Mrs. Katz, there will be a pancake breakfast sometime. I am not personally involved in that stuff, but I will make sure that they do contact you to get the, the books out there. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, you Oh, okay, we'll go with uh, uh, as the direct Alan Bad. Thank you, Mayor, Madam Clerk, Board of Trustees, and the residents of Sauk Village. In the last two weeks, EMA responded to three calls, two minor calls, a seal alarm at the uh, 22400 block of Clyde, and an order investigation on the 2000 block of 223rd. We also assisted um, Stager Fire Department with a structure fire, fully engulfed structure fire in the 3700 block of Stella Boulevard in Stager, Illinois. And at this time, Mr. Mayor, Madam Clerk, Board of Trustees, and the residents of Sauk Village, this concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, back to the police chief, Chief Malcolm White. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. Okay. Um, during the period of uh, February 12th until the night, uh, the police department responded to 441 calls for service. During that same time period, uh, officers made over 16 arrests. Uh, I did want to give the board a, a, a quick update on the um, SRO, school resource officer uh, position. Um, I wanted to give the superintendent, we did uh, have several discussions concerning this, the opportunity to present uh, our officer to the board. Um, in the meantime, we are uh, developing a schedule to uh, make sure that it's done uh, effectively as far as him migrating uh, his duties uh, from patrol to uh, the school district. Uh, the whole process, I believe, should take uh, around 30 days. Um, also, uh, there was a comment concerning, I guess, uh, I guess Mrs. Uh, Couch's uh, issue. I don't normally address uh, specific cases in front of the public, but I will meet with you concerning that um, because it is a case, which means that there was action taken, but I don't discuss it in public. Um, but you can meet with me afterwards. I believe that was it. <laughs> there. Village Board, that concludes my report. Thank you. Public uh, Works Director Kevin Wallace. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, currently, staff is working or was working on the north side shutoff list, total of 100. The list was completed today. Um, staff also from uh, 2-1 to 225, current day to day, had three water main breaks from this current period due to the weather shift and the, uh, the ground not having a frost line in it. Um, staff has been also out digging um, bee boxes. We have dug three bee boxes. Uh, these bee boxes are either for emergencies or off a, a current list of high bills, and these have to be dug to be shut off. Uh, 1636 to 15, 1628 to 15, and 22411 Yates. Um, staff has also been taking care of some of the street light complaints. Um, we do have a uh, budget within F MFT to do certain maintenance on street lights. Uh, 13 lights have been repaired um, as of the, from the beginning of the month of current. Uh, 22162 Cornell, that light is back in service. 1181 Janus, that light is back in service. Four lights on Sauk Trail, those lights are back in service. 2212 221st Street, that light is back in service. There are four lights that were on Mark Collins Drive, the two entrance ones the wire was taken out of, and then two other ones on the main drag, all those lights are back in service. Uh, currently, one on Windpack was out. Uh, we have an upgrade to make on the rest of the lights in Windpack to our current light heads. Um, they still have old 400 watt sodium, so they have to be replaced yet. Uh, we have a company now, we're doing a retrofit on the heads, so it'll be probably next two weeks we'll start to replace some of those heads. Uh, we also have three lights uh, that ComEd had to come out and do a disconnect in the, uh, the box in the backyard, the power box. These are faults underground. We have a company coming out Monday to locate the faults. As soon as the, locates, the faults are located, we will repair them. Uh, the current uh, ones that we have right now that are faults are 1635 216th Street, and then we have two that are on Constance, at either end of Constance Avenue. Staff is a little behind still on, uh, on repair to our vehicles. We do have all of our vehicles usable right now for the storm event, um, but they have all the little issues. Hopefully we won't have any problems with the current storm, um, but we will fix them as needed. 
Um, and then, as I said earlier about the community center building, uh, we are starting some work in the community center. We have uh, some tile work. We have some uh, drywall work from damage. We have some painting to do, some ceiling tiles. Um, and we're also going to be starting on uh, stripping and waxing the floors. And the last item I have is 221-225. Uh, we had sewer, four sewer calls, two homeowners, and two main backups. Both backups were jetted and put back into service. And residents are reminded if they have a sewer backup, uh, they should call the village uh, during business hours and ask somebody to come out and check the main at least before they call a plumber out. And if, after hours, after 5 o'clock and on the weekends, they can call the police non-emergency line and somebody will be sent out to check the main to verify that it's not backed up. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, Mr. Weller, uh, for the next board report, can you uh, please let us know or give us an update on the fire hydrants? You know, how many we fixed so far this year and how many are not working still? Zero this year. Zero that? Uh, this year. Fixed. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, 2020. Well, I'm sorry, I'm thinking, I'm thinking fiscal year. So from, I guess from May until now, I guess, the fiscal year basis. Thank you. All right, uh, Community Development Director Tanya McCoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Community Development Department, we have issued 138 tickets, 24, 24 permits, and four reoccupancy certificates for the month of February. Um, I want to encourage you all to come out to the Talk to Tanya event where we talk about solutions. Um, we're not going to improve the community. Um, and that leads me to one of our big projects that we're doing this year. Uh, starting in March, we're going to start demolishing, demo, demoing uh, the firehouses um, in, in the phase one area. That's the uh, Carroll and Peterson Avenue area. Um, we're going to do that in, in, in March, and as well as get rid of some of the dead trees. Um, and this is going to lead up to our big event, which I'm asking for volunteers to, to come out and support uh, the beautification program for, uh, for Salt Village. Uh, again, we're starting in phase one, which, which will include all of Salt Trail up into Jeffrey and back by uh, Carroll and Peterson Avenue. Um, and we're also going to start on that day, which would tentatively, is tentatively set for May 16th, um, doing the trash can murals to encourage um, people to keep the, the village clean. Um, that's all going to happen on March 16th, and I encourage you guys to come out if you want to talk more about it and be involved in this uh, project or what I consider a movement. Um, please join us at the Talk to Tanya, which is every second Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, and the next one is March 10th. So that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. The reports of, tr of trustees, uh, the standing committee, public safety committee, trustee Gary Bell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next uh, meeting for my committee will be on the 17th of March. Should be here in the rotunda about 11 a.m. Um, I've, I've made phone calls, many phone calls to different grocery outlets, uh, Kroger, which would be Save a Lot, or uh, Food for Less, Jet Foods, Aldi, uh, Burkotts, and I've got phone calls back from Jet, but there's, they've, already, they've been in contact with the current grocery store people who own it, and they're not very impressed. That's where we're at on that. When I asked them about building a new store, they have talking about a TIF district, so they're going to look into that next. And that concludes my report. Good job up there. Oh, okay. I see you there. Uh, that was a comment. So the comments would be at the end when we have comments, but that's okay. Uh, public service committee trustee. Public service committee trustee. Where is your? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a short. Um, Comment, I mean, well, not comment, that's right. Uh, Ms. Uh, McCoy forgot to leave out something we worked on that I thought was a really uh, good program that we got, uh, that was started with Maggie Jar and also uh, the village administrator was there. It's called the Complete Street Policy. Uh, we haven't got, I didn't get the uh, printout for the information, but this is uh, something that is going to be helpful to the uh, village. You know, we're going to identify the streets, uh, make sure we have stuff like uh, 
shelters for the, for the street, try to get some sidewalks in here. It all depends on money. And the big thing right now is we don't have any money. So uh, uh, Ms. McCoy will uh, let you know that that was, a, that was a great program that we sat in. And we're going to go back and try to get some more information. And uh, Ms. Jar is going to try to find us some money uh, for this particular program. It's a great program. That's the end of my report. Okay, uh, budget and finance committee, Trustee Roger Durant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Only comment I have is that um, I asked the trustees for comments uh, week after week. Um, I want to put it on the agenda next week for discussion. Um, hopefully by that time we could uh, have a meaningful discussion because I still haven't received anything except for Trustee Ty I was saying she'll get something to me soon. But other than that, I have not heard anything from anybody else. Um, I know this is something that you guys said you wanted, so it was provided to you guys. Um, so if we could just move forward next week, have a discussion placed on the agenda, and then hopefully vote on this one after. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, housing and government relations, Trustee Sherry Zinsky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Unfortunately, I didn't realize when I said I was gonna have a meeting Wednesday, you have a campaign um, form tomorrow night. So I'll have to re um, I still didn't post it because I thought there's the census stuff going on too. So I'm going to have to postpone my meeting and I'll reschedule it and get back on track in March. That concludes my report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance Review Committee met last night and there's three ordinances that are going to be brought before the board next week on the Committee on the Whole. One is the Rehab Ordinance, Spending Freeze, Hiring Freeze. Um, we had three other um, ordinances that we need to look at, but these took some time, so I'm going to reschedule a meeting for March 9th, 6.30 here in the Rotunda, so that we can address these three. Um, one is the clerk's duties, the agenda ordinance that Trustee Brewer presented, and we have an issue with the... Um, <laughs> yes, it was, a, it was an oh, yeah. ordinance that you presented. And one is for a false alarm, and the, I'm waiting for the attorneys to check in when it comes to the false alarms. It has to do with our fire alarm. When the um, fire department responds to a fire alarm, they're finding that residents refuse to let them in. So we need to know what our liability is or what we need to put in the ordinance because if they look, if they can't get into the house and they go around and look, check the perimeter, everything looks good, and the house burns down, what is the responsibility? So I'm waiting to hear from the attorney on that. And so this will be March 9th, 6.30, here in the Rotunda, and we're always looking for volunteers. And that ends my, my report. Thank you. Public events, Trustee Deborah Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The newest updated calendar is on the back table. Uh, just a few things I want to bring to note. On March 14th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., that's on a Saturday, there's a flyer for the Cook County Treasurer, Maria Pappas office, will help with property tax problems. The treasurer's office will be on, on right here, standby to talk to residents regarding searching for $79 million in available refunds. You can apply for $44 million in missing senior citizen property tax exemptions, and they can check to see if you have property taxes that are delinquent or how they can help you with that. So that will be taking place right here in the rotunda on March 14th from 11 to 1. May, May 2nd is our second blood drive that will be happening in the Senior Center from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's also on a Saturday. In June, we're gonna do our community garage sale, which will take place on the 20th, and that should be hopefully happening outside the Village Hall area. In July, we are working with the Independence Day Fire Works and Parade. We did meet at our Public Events Committee last night we decided one of the best ways we could attempt to raise money is through an ad book fundraiser. So we'll be seeing some information coming out about that fairly shortly as well. Uh, the Valentine's for Veterans program was the first year that we did it. Uh, we're gonna build up on that and get more Valentines out next year. We're gonna start it sooner and hopefully get some Valentines overseas. But we did end up getting some Valentines to the veterans and various veterans hospitals. And I, I'm glad that we were able to uh, to do that event, and we will continue to do that. Our next meeting for the public events is March 16th at 5 p.m. That's tentatively scheduled, depending if the uh, volunteers on the committee are available at that time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 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 Thank you, Mr.
Um, the calendar's on the back, I, I'm a, I, and also in your box, all the information is in there. What would you like me to repeat? Com community yard sale, or community garage sale, whichever you want to call it, is going to be on June 20th. Before that was the blood drive on May 2nd at the Senior Center, and uh, that's from 10 to 2. Everybody has this calendar in their boxes? And all residents have it on the back table. But if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you. Okay. Reports of the Phase Commission Senior Advisory Council. Uh, and uh, Mr. Farmer is going to be, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Coleman will be reporting to Mr. Farmer. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor, Board of uh, People of Salt Village. Report for this Tuesday, February 25th, 2020, Executive Board Meeting or the Senior Advisory Council is as follows. Our next meeting for the Senior Advisory Council is Thursday, March 12th at 5 p.m. and all are welcome. And also at 4 p.m. that same day, we will be having our first Senior Club meeting. For more information on the Senior Club membership, please contact uh, Chairman Emmett Farmer. Also, come out and join our seniors for breakfast bingo every second and fourth Friday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's a lot of fun, guys. Also, seniors, don't forget game night every first and third Friday. Come for the card games, such as bid whist and other games from 6 p.m. until 10. Also. Committee members will be teaching bidwits from 6 p.m. until 7 p.m. every first and third Fridays for those who don't know how to play. Also, seniors on our first senior luncheon of the year will be held Thursday, March 26, 2020, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the senior uh, facilities. There is no cost for the senior club members and $5 for anyone else open to all individuals 50 years or older. Contact committee member Deborah Coney at 708-710-4564. 708-710-4564. And that concludes the report. Thank you. I, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Coleman, are you going to be here on Thursday? I'll repeat what I just said about the $5. Okay, it says um, all seniors, our first senior luncheon of the year will be held on Thursday, March 26, 2020 at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the senior facilities. There is no cost to the senior club members and $5 for everyone else. So, yeah. Okay. Club Okay, uh, new business. I'll accept the motion to approve the council payable for February 25th, 2020, in the amount of $302,597.97. So moved. Second. The move by Trustee Bell, second by Trustee Williams. I make a motion. And now I read it at this time, is that correct? I make a motion to approve the consent, to approve consent agenda motion to approve the following agreements, resolutions, and policies. Number one, motion to aid the Nancy L. McConaughey Library with securing and erecting road signs. A resolution amending the appointment of local government directors to the South Suburban Land Bank and Development Authority. Number three, a resolution authorizing and directing the submission of an application to the Cook 
I'm sorry, the County of Cook, Illinois, requesting community development block grant funds for program year. Number four, approve the Ed Paisel Community Center rental and reservation policy. Number five, approve the Welch Veterans Memorial Park rental and reservation policy. Is this where you ask a question about the no, policy? Yes, I have to get a second. Mm -hmm. A second. It was yeah. moved by Trustee Todd, second by Trustee Bell. Any questions? I have a question on uh, the uh, policy and uh, on the considered agenda for four and five for the Ed Paisel uh, Community Center and the uh, Welch uh, Veterans Com Memorial Park. Now, it's my understanding that Mr. Green is going to start uh, taking over that program, and it seems to me that he should have some kind of input to uh, the policy and procedures. That's why I asked him. Uh, there's uh, four or five, you want a couple things changed, even though they might be minute. Uh, I think he should weigh in on uh, any uh, changes uh, that he wants or should, uh, that is needed for these particular prop, uh these two uh, policies, procedures, it's a good idea to have his input to this um, because we don't have a director. So um, I just ask that uh, we we wait until he, you know, takes a look at this. He, he might have something outstanding that he wants to add, which would be great, you know, because you know we don't run around too with this. Okay. Um, first, first, these are the community sensor rental reservation policies, which he had nothing to do with. And the second one is the rental of the Welsh Park, which he had nothing to do Well, um, like I said, these are, uh, he's going to be acting as director for these two particular uh, no, no. entities. Oh, he's not? No, he's, he's, doing, he's doing the gym. Mm -hmm. okay. He's a volunteer. He's a volunteer right now, but right now he's going to be bringing programs into the gym. These are the rental policies that were revised for the rental of the gym, I'm sorry, the rental, so we don't the gym out. The rental of the community center and the rental of the Memorial Welch Memorial Park. And he might, and he doesn't have any input to the uh, rental property, uh, rental uh, reservation policies for the gym? We don't rent the gym out. Oh. Any other questions? <coughs> Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Trustee Bell. Yes. Trustee Brewer. No. Trustee Grant. Yes. Trustee Chisholm. Yes. In the near future, if you want to take something, this is what I want to bring up. If you want to take something off of the consent agenda, the time to do it is before you make the motion to accept the consent agenda. So if you feel that you want to take something out of there, then that would be a good time to say, I want to vote on this item separately and not be part of But the question that was asked was a motion to accept the consent agenda. That means that's the whole agenda. Now, if you, want to, if you, if you have a reservation and say, I want to take item A, B, or C out of the consent agenda and have it voted on separately, but to say that you want to to do that, then you know, because it looks like because that's not the sentence in the front line. Do we have to redo it? No. But I'm just saying in the future. We have to we have to do it that way. There's nothing wrong with saying I want to take it out, but we can't vote on the consent agenda if there's not a consent. Oh I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Um that being said, uh comments comments from the uh, trustees and, and the mayor, I started with uh, Trustee Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. With regards to the finances that were brought to the table, the person that is closest to our financial situation, which is our interim finance director, is the one who came and said he recommended that we do a forensic audit. So for whatever reason, they're, they're, he came to light and said we should do this. There's a scope of work that needed to be prepared in order to begin the forensic audit. That was the piece of paperwork, one of the pieces of paperwork, including to the resolution, in order to start the forensic audit. But 
at the time when he recommended it, he did also say that we have a tsunami getting ready to hit as far as our finances. So I don't, I don't want to show the word fraud around too easily or anything like that. What I'm saying is we have precarious financial situation. Our finance director, interim finance director suggested we do this. So I just want to make sure that that's, that's very clear to everybody. And as far as the litigation is concerned, part of the reason the litigation, it's not all about the trustees. We have day-to-day -day operations that happen in Sauk Village. We have union contracts. We have ongoing past and current litigation. We have litigation that was caused by some members of this board, and we have other litigation, some litigation that's been hanging out for like seven, six, five more years. So there's a lot going on when it comes to the legal bills. And I do know for a fact that they've been reduced greatly in the several months since the time that was referred to. And then going back to the kindness challenge, yes, I was there when they did the kindness challenge. And I have to tell you that it was absolutely phenomenal to see the kids dressed in their t-shirts saying basically they just want to be kind. They were given a challenge not knowing that there was actually a competition. And they did compete with 650 schools in order to win this award. And they didn't know that they had won until that day. They knew they were in the top five, but they didn't know they had won. So to, to be there when they found out that they actually won and the streamers were going and the kids were screaming and shouting and clapping, it was absolutely phenomenal and it was very emotional and I'm glad I was a part of it. It's just what Sock Village needs. But one thing I do know the whole time I sat there was we could learn from our children because their kindness challenge that they did out of the goodness of their heart, not even knowing that there was a prize at the end of it, if they were chosen, we all can learn from that example because one thing that we all need to know Social media is brutal. Social media will be continued. Take it for what it's worth when you read social media. Take it for exactly what it's worth. Most of it, no matter who did it or what side, most of it is not true. It's, it's just put out there to make people basically stop being kind to each other. So I, for one, as a trustee, would always hear, if you have any questions, to answer exactly what's on social media, whether or not it's true. Because if it were me, social media would be a thing of the past. It's really hurting us more than it's helping us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All I got to say is be careful out there. It's nasty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two comments. So, uh, Somebody in the audience asked us, did we read the audit? I will say yes. Um, I did have a chance to read the audit. I think we got it a year ago, so I think that's before this board even was uh, put in place. And um, yeah, so and I think that you know there was a lot of audit findings. There was you know somebody said six pages or so, so there were a lot. But that's something that they might ask, what can this board do about it? Um, in my mind, we can, in my opinion, we can do some things about it, but that's ultimately going to be up to the um, finance department and village administrator to come up with those policies and procedures to put in place to kind of tackle some of those issues. Um, and then also, I want to address the, the why the forensic audit wasn't on the agenda to be voted on, and I thought that it shouldn't have been on the agenda at all because as a, as a board last week, Mr. Finch presented to us uh, three vendors who he thought could do the job, but we never decided who would do it. So he made a recommendation of who he wanted to, but us trustees did not say we want to go with, with your recommendation. So I didn't see how we're gonna vote on something that we didn't come to an agreement on. So I'm not sure where that came from. Um, but and I did ask him last week also to provide us with a, a, a I guess a cost breakdown of each vendor, how much it will cost us, just using you know assumptions because one vendor could be ten. I'm just throwing it out there, ten thousand. One vendor could be twenty. One could be thirty, and we should know what that is before we decide to move forward with whoever we decide to move forward with. Uh, and that's all I have on the uh, comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Trustee Dzinski. I would just like to congratulate the Wagner School. I was unable to attend um, due to my work schedule. And also, I am glad that the forensic audit is being done. Um, we did give um, Mr. Finch our ideas, so hopefully that'll be getting done next month. And that concludes my comments. Trustee Brooks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, 
The finance director, Mr. Finch, has recommended that we uh, look into our financial area. As you know, and those people, who, uh, residents who've been around here 20 years plus have known there's always been something uh, that wasn't quite right with the finances here. We have always borrowed to pay Peter, to pay Paul. That's common knowledge. And we should be able to get more for our goods and services than we have been getting since day one. We pay our taxes, and yet we don't see any improvement to the village. So there are some things that has gone on since uh, May of 2017 that the trustees have no knowledge of. Uh, things have been done without the advice and consent of the board. And those are the things that we're looking at. At no time has any trustee says anything was stolen or it was fraud. We're just looking at a better way of doing the way, uh, things the way we are doing them. Because we know since we have some audits that and, uh, I'm following what uh, Trustee Grant is saying, that they have shown that things are not quite rare. Things are not segregated. Uh, money's moved without our permission. These are things that's common knowledge. So um, what we're looking for is to give us a clean slate so we can move forward. We have money, we think, we hope, to do some things for residents. And that's what we're here for, to watch the, the money. So again, I want to say we need to uh, look at that audit really well to find out if we're doing something that we need to do something better or differently in order to get the money out. Nobody has accused anybody of any fraud or theft. We just want to do what's right for us, for our families, and yours too. And that's the end of my comment. Christy Todd. Thank you. Um, I had the privilege yesterday of also going to Wagner School and um, there was a lot of cheers and a lot of tears because it was very emotional that one of the things that was pointed out, it was the only elementary school that has won this award. So I'm assuming there's probably high schools that have won it. We were the first in Illinois and the first elementary school. And the one thing is um, LG Sims brought a proclamation, but yesterday, the, well, the Illinois Senate has declared Monday, well, I shouldn't even say Monday, it'll be February 24th, will be um, National Kindness Day in the state of Illinois. So that was really impressive. So congratulations to Wagner School, the staff, District 168, the, the principals, the teachers, it was outstanding. And that ends my comment. Thank you. Um, First of all, the, um, the Kindness Day yesterday, um, it was it was something that and it showed that children, that our youth, especially at that age, are smarter than we are from time to time. I mean, they're more disciplined, but that, that goes to show you what happens as we get older. That goes out the window. But it was something that I saw that when they got a little loud or a little boisterous and they were trying to talk, um, they raised, the, the purple raised her hand. And she put up three fingers. And then she said two, and she said one, and zero. By that time, it was, it was quiet. That's something they learned at that age. I went to an event for the Black History Month. And that was up at the junior, at the junior high school. So you can see the progression. These are your junior high school, the sixth, seventh, eighth grade. They had to yell, scream, and everything just to get the people that were in the audience to calm down. The finger part went out the door. I didn't even see that. But it shows you what happens as life goes on. Now we're going to fast forward to even at board meetings where we talk over each other or around each other or just just talk period. We need to learn. <laughs> I wish everyone that came to that yesterday to see just how it is when they're that young, so innocent and um, happy because they were ecstatic. They had no idea. They were trying to figure out why they was in the um, gym. But when they found out, yes, they, 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 they got excited. 
but it's just something to see. And, um, it, it, as, as Trustee Todd said, I think mean, it was it was the grammar school. I would have thought it would have been a high school that would have won something like this, but it was the number one, and it was told us number one school in the nation. That's something. So that part there, I was I was totally amused, and all of our representatives came out. We had um, L. G. Sims from the Senate, Nick Smith from the representative from the state rep, and then uh, Marcus Evans. Yeah, Donna Miller, yeah, all the representatives that are representing, it's amazing how they came out when there was something that Channel 9 was out there talking. <laughs> but they came out to represent, they didn't have to come out and do that, they came out to be part of what was going on, so, and I, and I do, and I, and I appreciate that. I just have a couple of things as far as, and I'm just going to um, say that, I, yes, the forensic audit, I'm not against it. I am not against it, but I just want to say that if we're going to spend money, let's spend it on something as was just stated that you can see in the village. So if we're going to, if we have that ability to do that and use the money that we got from the sale of the uh, gas and wash, which this is the first time since I've been an a, um, elected official, and that goes all the way back to 2006, that we had a reserve. All the other times we, we had this borrow money from here, borrow money from there. We haven't borrowed anything from the water department but once. And that was at the very beginning of 2017. So, but that being said, okay, let's, let's, let's do something positive. So I'm gonna to present to the board in the near future the quotes for the trees, sidewalks, and the streets. And I'm not saying we can do them all, but we need to get some of these streets done right after the snow, right after it gets warm in the village. Knock some of these, knock, knock, um, um, do them. I think it's about 40,000 a street. So we have to you know, look at it and see uh, which ones we can get done. When I say a whole stretch, I'm about a block, I'm sorry. About 40,000 a block to do that. But then the other things involved in that too, because it depends on where, depending on where it's at, some, some of the curves have to be cut down. So I'm just hoping that we can do that. I know there's going to be a spending cut. So please, I hope that when it gets to that point, and we have these quotes, but I don't, I don't really, I don't want to hear, well, you know, we got spending cut in their place now, so we can't spend this. This is for the village. That's what the money's for, to enhance that. So that's all I, I have to say about that. And uh, that being said, um, I'll set the motion to adjourn. So, who says, who says, who? Okay, move by Trustee Bill, move by Trustee Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.